Through video, we can all learn together. Please subscribe, like, and share. Thanks for watching. And please, go tell your friends and neighbors about what you've learned. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear family, before we begin our meditation this morning, not on the pandemic, but the fear-demic, hear that again, not pandemic, but let's start calling it what it is, the fear-demic. Please allow me to say to everyone near and far how blessed we are to know we're not alone. I am trying to thank everyone for all the kindness and prayers and support. At the moment, there's over 100 cards on my dining room table. I'll answer every one. In the emails, I, I hoped to read every one, but things have gotten behind so quickly. Let us all just realize how God has blessed us to know we are not alone. Also, just quickly, I personally want to thank Father Heilman and Mr. Doug Berry, great heroes of our time. Father Don Calloway, who sent me all those St. Joseph cards that I've been able to include in so many letters. Because through them, these, these greats of our times, they've been doing it way longer than I ever have. The, such great voices in our church today, they, they help us share in the gift of faith. Even so, seeds of faith. Faith in the one holy Catholic, one and only holy Catholic and apostolic church. Faith in the unchanged and unchangeable truth. As for me, I've said for more than 13 years since the diaconate ordination. By what miracle I get to be a part of this, only God knows. So with all that said, let us look at how today's gospel and today's psalm apply to these, our desperate times. We heard in the gospel today the very same words we heard on Sunday. Quote, And every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. What does that even mean? What does it mean for a scribe to be like the head of a household to bring old and new stuff from the storeroom? Who has a clue what in the world Jesus is even talking about there? Well, while preparing for Sunday, I specifically remember thinking, Oh, there's that odd passage again about the scribe who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. And I remember thinking specifically, all right, well, I once knew what that meant, but I didn't have time to go into research that specific portion again, because we already had plenty to talk about. Those who suffer through Sunday's meditation know these meditations are long enough as it is. But lo, there it shows up again today. So, now you will come to learn what that odd passage actually means. The key to understanding it is reading the fullness of the gospel. Not just some chopped up little bit, like that little bit we had today, all taken out of context. If you, if you don't have context, you, you're not going to get it. So hear it again, what Jesus said. Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. Now let's look at the context. Jesus was referring to the scribes. Scribes, as you know, are the ones who have studied the law. The law is a generic term for the Old Testament. But watch now, watch. Here Jesus did not say every scribe who has been instructed in the law. Jesus said every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven. And when you look at the context, it suddenly makes perfect sense because this passage is the last part of chapter 13. And you have to realize what Jesus just got done teaching in the first 90% of chapter 13 for this statement to make sense. In chapter 13, Jesus had just got done instructing the apostles in six different ways 
in which he said, in one form or another, the kingdom of heaven is like. So chapter 13 starts out, remember, the, the parable of the sower, who goes and he sows out seeds and all the ground, wherever he goes, some different soils like rocky ground, the pathway ground, the thorny ground, and finally there's some good soil in there too. After Jesus gives that parable, then he, he specifically does what he's said. Throughout chapter 13, he just starts spreading the seeds amongst all the grounds. We know this. And the seeds Jesus repeatedly sowed are seeds that teach the kingdom of heaven is like. So he starts with the parable of the weeds among the wheat. The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the, all through the wheat. Remember, remember how that first one ended. First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning. Then Jesus taught the parable of the mustard seed. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in the field. It's the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. Then Jesus taught the parable of the yeast. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. And then in the full version of Sunday's gospel, there was a shorter version. I used the longer one. Jesus taught the parable of the treasure buried in a field. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field. And a person finds and which a person finds and hides again and then goes out and he sells all that he has to, to buy that field. And then Jesus taught the parable of the pearl of great price. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and he buys it. And then finally we come to today's gospel, where again Jesus taught the parable of the net full of good fish, but also a lot of bad fish. The kingdom of heaven is like and then Jesus went on to describe the fishermen who hauled in the nets, and some were keepers, put them in the keeper bucket, others thrown away. We all should pay attention to that last scary bit, because Jesus taught the kingdom of heaven is like. That's exactly what it will be like. The angels are going to gather in the good wheat, the good fish, be judgment, the righteous few will be kept, but then there's that scary bit, the wicked many will be thrown into the fiery furnace. So again, after Jesus first explains the four types of soil where he, the sower, will spread the seeds of faith, he then sows the seeds of faith in six different parables, specifically to teach the kingdom of heaven is like weeds among the wheat, the mustard seed, the yeast, the buried treasure, the pearl of great price, and finally the net full of good and bad fish. And then, after all that, in a big summation, Jesus stated clearly that every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. What Jesus is saying here is that the apostles now are the scribes who, by definition, have been instructed in the law, the Old Testament. And now they've been instructed in the kingdom of heaven, the New Testament. Thus, they are now in a position as heads of the household. And they must bring the fullness of the teaching, both the old and the new, from the storeroom, both the Old Testament and the New Testament. And that there is the explanation for that very odd passage. Now let's look at the truth of today's psalm which was as true in the Old Testament, as true a thousand years before the Incarnation, as it is now, 2,000 years after the Incarnation. Put not your trust in princes, in the sons of men, in whom there is no salvation. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. But family, these are desperate times. So let us be like the scribes, taking the old and the new, putting them together, understand these desperate times. These are desperate times, and in these desperate times, there are too many godless people, and sadly, too many 
baptized Catholics, laity and clergy alike, who have put their trust in princes. As if today's, as if the gospels in today's psalm and the last 100 years since Our Lady of Fatima have not taught us that the princes of the world are not to be trusted. When pondering the current situation, it would behoove us to remember that the princes of the world conspired with the chief shepherds and the Judas apostle to crucify Jesus. How can we trust them? Your family, over the last five months, we have been force-fed not a pandemic, but a fear-demic. The entire world gripped in fear, stuffed down our throats. The entire globe has been shut down out of a fear-demic. Your family, let us not continue to be led down that path of folly. What has really happened over the last five months is that we have been lied to repeatedly. All the while, so many have put their trust in earthly princes. Let us look at the facts. Let us discern a few facts that belie the earthly princes. As of yesterday, we're being told that 150,000 Americans have died of COVID. That's a big, fat lie, period. It is so overstated as to be unconscionable for the fear-demic it has created. Remember how even the all-star British scientists, remember, oh, we got to rely on science, science, science. No mention of God. Let's rely on God, the creator of heaven and earth. No, none of that. So why are these scientists? Remember how the all-star British scientists admit it. Their model, their man-made model, their estimates were all wrong. And instead of their original number, remember they said this, 500,000 Brits were going to die this year from the pandemic. Almost immediately, they revised it down to just 20,000. And this is huge. They said that over half of those... Remember this, over half of those would die this year anyway from all the other stuff wrong with them. So just, so less than 10,000, less than 2% of the original science, the original scientific model would die of COVID. Remember, these are the same people who scared, instilled the fear-demic. Oh, 2.2 million Americans would die this year. Revise that down to just 2%, 44,000. Not a very scary number at all. And I remember, we've talked about this, how a coroner issued a death certificate for the guy with the blood alcohol level seven times the legal limit and roughly two times the lethal limit. Emphasis on lethal. But the health department revised it as a COVID death. And we know the stories are countless, how many people are counted as COVID deaths even though COVID was not a discernible main cause of death. But in countless cases, and in fact, in countless cases, COVID only was surmised because the symptoms of the decedent were so similar to so many other causes, potential causes of death. There were were symptoms that were similar to other things, but they still record, well, COVID. Let's err on the side of caution. Let's call it COVID. Let's build that number up. Let's instill fear in the people. Let's get this fear-demic fired up. And we know there are many false positives being reported. So even false positives amongst the many other deaths of, many other causes of death are called COVID deaths. And yet, and yet, even with these artificially pumped up numbers, they still only claim that there have been 150,000 deaths allegedly due to COVID over an almost now seven-month period. Even though it has been roughly seven months, January through July, since COVID came from China, with no lockdown in the first two and a half months, during a time when COVID ostensibly spread to virtually every state in the union, every nation on the earth, never since there's been, there really has been absolutely no lockdown at Walmart, Sam's Club, Home Depot, Menards, and even... And even all this new, this mandatory masking now is new, yet only 150,000 allegedly COVID deaths. And when you compare, dear family, total number of deaths in the U.S. over the last decade, and this required a lot of research past midnight last night, 
it, it looks like deaths increased by about roughly anywhere 25 to 50,000 a year. So in 2020, we would expect total deaths to be about roughly 3 million. So even if it were true, and it's not, that there were 150,000 COVID deaths, and we know that's a lie, that's still a small number of total deaths. And if you reduce it by at least half, like the British scientists said, then you look at 75,000. And then if you then annualize that number, you look at about 125,000 COVID deaths for the year. Then compare that the CDC estimates that last flu season, 2018-19, the flu was associated with more than 35.5 million illnesses and 34,200 deaths. And then compare that with the CDC estimates for the 2017-18 season where the flu was associated with 45 million illnesses and 61,000 deaths. So realize, dear family, watch, just do the math. Based on a difference of perhaps only about 60,000 deaths annualized, we have shut down the lives of 330 million Americans and consequently have affected the well-being of the entire globe of over 7 billion people. We have shut down the United States, shut down the globe, and closed our churches because some scientists have created a fear-demic about the possibility that we might get sick, even though as many as 99.75% recover with little or no symptoms at all. And just when we think it couldn't get worse. The infamous Dr. Fauci now says, I mean, he's, he's billed as a nation's top infectious disease expert. He now says this week that wearing goggles or an eye shield in addition to a face mask would provide more complete protection against the coronavirus. Dear family, this is diabolical. This fear demic is diabolical. And anyone with any knowledge whatsoever of economics, of humanity, certainly of our faith, knows that our country and the entire globe has just been set up for a disaster of biblical proportions. And we're seeing it, of course, the initial sparks of the kaboom out in the, in the absolute critical mass of spoiled brats anarchists in every major city. Dear family, this is diabolical. And the one countermeasure we have to the diabolical is the sacramental life of the Catholic Church. And yet that sacramental life was denied to the faithful. We have not even begun to comprehend a portion of the fullness of the disaster through the lack of grace that has been caused and will continue to cause. I, I don't hear anybody talking about eternal souls. Oh, got to worry about our bodies. Let's be afraid of getting sick. Not much talk about eternal souls, even though we know from the Gospels, those angels are going to come up and they're going to burn the many. Good God, dear family, do we see what has been done all in the name of a fear-demic? Dear family, in these desperate times, let us keep at the forefront of our minds yet another parable Jesus the Lord taught us. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like the wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, but it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. Now let's look at what the fear demic has done. Everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rains fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. But family, let us never lose hope. Our hope is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let us never lose hope no matter how much the fear-demic is stuffed down our throats daily. 
In fact, here's a bit of sad humor that teaches us all is not lost. Not everybody is a sheeple. Some people get it. Just when we might have thought that the sheeples are going to do us in, not everyone has responded favorably on social media to Fauci's latest idea of adding goggles to the face masks. Some remarked, oh, the, well, the next step will be hazmat suits. Or as I've said before, living inside a bubble. Some people, dear family, actually get it and realize that this is all heading toward complete and total communist control, the very Russian error our Blessed Mother warned us about at Fatima 100 years ago. So having recalled the great parable about building our house on the rock, the rock of Jesus, the rock of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, let us conclude by hearing one more time the rock expressed in today's psalm. Put not your trust in princes, in the sons of men, in whom there is no salvation. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.